Arise, minions, and welcome to Unmade Gaming. We are back for another episode of Cyberpunk Phoenix, where this time we're taking a walk in the park. Uh, so, as always, if you guys like what we do here and you want to support the channel, the best way to do that is in the link down below for our Patreon. Also, joining our Discord and being a part of the conversation. Uh, and as always, the bottom right-hand corner, you will see the corruption bar. That bar serves two purposes. One is when that bar fills... Simon gets to do whatever the hell he wants to us. And two, every single dollar that goes into that bar goes back to these wonderful, amazing faces you see here before you. With that, I turn things over to Simon to take us back into the world of Night City. Hello, everyone. So, last we left our group, we uh, were in Night City heading to, well, heading out of a restaurant in the northern side of town called Che Che. Um, there, Magnus introduced the rest of the crew to uh, Ken Parker, an old Arasaka mercenary who was recently forcefully disimplanted. Is that a word? Had, had his implants removed. Um, scavenged by a group of um, gang uh, gangers, actually, called the Maelstrom. The group, consisting of uh, Magnus, Ketch, Jewel, and Proxy, decided to take on this job. And uh, for various reasons, which we'll disclose in a moment, um, but they uh, decided to help Mr. Parker. Let's just go really quickly around the table. Uh, tell us who you are and uh, what you, why you've accepted this job. That'll serve as a tiny recap before we delve into the planning phase of tonight's gig. We'll start with our Netrunner. Hello, I'm Proxy. Uh... I feel like I'm doing like one of those reality show like diary entries. <laughs> Sorry, just a moment. The, the uh, asides in the office. <laughs> yeah, so um, I took this job because first of all, Maelstrom can suck it. And also because, you know, you gotta fight for, for the people who can't fight for themselves, you know? And also it's gonna be a walk in the park. So like, why not? Um, why did the fixer accept the job? Um, he didn't. He fixed up the job and then Just said volunteer. he was going to yeah. go home. <laughs> and then everyone at the table said, no, you're not. And he said, oh, all right. Because uh, there was no payment uh, discussed for him. And there's really no reason for him to be here at all. Uh, so he had no intention of being here because that's what fixers do. Uh, so he doesn't know. He's just here, Simon. <laughs> That's good. Uh, why did our medic accepted the job? Well, when a guy comes to you and is missing an arm and a leg, literally, and says that he wants his last meal and you're a doctor, might be inclined to try to help him. Um, of course, because helping people is a good thing to do. But on top of that, uh, right now, my only connections being uh, Magnus, AKA Taco Duck, uh, is a gang that kind of like protects my taco truck when I happen to be in their area of Night City. So having more information and more connections through Catch kind of putting this job together and whatever uh, Ken Parker kind of dilutes to us after this gig is over, might be useful to me in my own plans, whatever those are. And lastly, we have an exec on board. Why did you accept the job? So Jewel, um, Jewel, who to refresh everybody is our our local Biotechnica representation uh, for uh, Biotechnica to, to again a recap. They are one of the big corporations in Night City that kind of specialize in genetic engineering and biochemical research and, and things like that. Um, on, the, on the surface, Jewel accepted this um, to get, uh, especially because this individual is a former representative of Arasaka, um, Jewel thought that maybe we could uh, 
get some information on and see any details that he has on the insights of one of the more infamous corporations in Night City. Um, and on top of that, she kind of has her own ulterior motive uh, to try to uh, kind of convince Magnus to maybe join and work for Biotechnica because he has his own skills that I think would be very valuable to our company. So that's her her secret motive that she hasn't made very secret. All right. Then we'll pick back up um, after the terrible events that ended our last session. Mr. Parker has been put in Magnus's cryo pump as he collapsed from what appeared to be a heart attack. You were at the restaurant about to leave when Magnus went out to his taco truck to ensure the survival of Mr. Parker. While the three of you um, made plans to either drive back home or hitch a ride back to your respective houses or apartments or I don't know, containers. We'll fast forward about an hour or two in the middle of the night as some of you might begin your prep work for the upcoming gig. Um, whoever wants to take the mic can go first, but we'll go around the table for sure because I would like to know, what do you do to prep for this job? I will jump in. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I would say Proxy feels a little bit of pressure because she did say it was going to be a walk at the park and um, assured everyone that her plan would be, uh, you know, completely under the radar. So she's, she's doing a lot of work to figure out the blueprints, the actual layout of the entire building, local access points, at least nearby that she could. Um, what I did actually want to do was have uh, Magnus drop her off close to where they're going to be. And she would kind of see the nearby area, not go quite close to Maelstrom specifically, but get an idea of the neighborhood around, including possible other access points or even just vantage points because she is very big on tactics. Uh, so that's kind of where she was at. And then once she had a physical idea of the space, then it would be at, at that point, the net prepping, you know, prepping herself from a perspective of ice and things like that. So. All right. Who was your driver tonight? I believe Magnus because it was, um, Jewel and Ketch went together and then, uh, Proxy hitched a ride with Magnus. Okay. So Magnus and you would have driven down south uh, through basically Little Europe, University District, where Jules would have uh, gone home, and then kept going south into the South Night City combat zone. As you drive through this impoverished part of town, many buildings around you stand crumbling, deserted, dark. In the windows or through holes in the walls of the other buildings, you can see the light of a um, fire, often from a trash can or from a, a bonfire that people are just throwing together to keep warm and to have some sort of light. Other places are still lit up with um, electricity most of these places are uh, fenced out or fenced in, I should say, by barbed wires and uh, security cameras and the occasional turret. There are a lot of booster gangs walking around town, basically patrolling their territory. You know that so long as you don't, you know, cause any fuss, things should be okay. Um, this entire section of, of Night City is um, the territory of the uh, Sixth Street Gang, which are mostly veterans of the Fourth Corporate Wars and, um, you know, our old army veterans that found themselves out of luck after either the Fourth Corporate War or even 
uh, the um, uh, the South American war that happened, you know, 40 years ago. And they've decided to make this area of Night City safer by taking the law into their own hands. So, so long as you follow, you know, your typical laws, you shouldn't run afoul of them. Of course, skirmishes between them, the Maelstrom, and other gangs are common. And so is the sound of gunfire as you drive your taco truck through the streets of the South Night City. You reach, um, you're about, we'll say, a block away. Um, and Magnus, tell me if you want to drive closer. But at least from a block away, you can see the building of this old, um, well, now reclaimed uh, Doc Savage clinic. The sign is still up. It glitches and flickers. A few of the letters are missing. Um, it's basically just called SAG now, but <laughs> it's, you know, it, it marks it as the place that you're looking for quite clearly. Okay. That um, said, oh, yep. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say there are two two streets to get there. One that'll lead you to the back of the clinic, and one that would lead you to the front. There are alleyways on both sides, but the taco truck cannot drive in these alleyways. Um. Where do you want me to take you? Oh, here is totally fine. I can find my way out oh, if you okay. need to go home. You have a weapon? I got, yeah, stuff. What what stuff? Just a baton. It's not great, but, oh, I mean, you know. Okay, no, that's, that's better than what I got. What do you have? I don't even know. That's probably buried in old... No, you know, yeah. taco trucks, truck stuff. You might want to get something for tomorrow if you don't have something already. Yeah. Just putting that out there, just in case, you know, because. Yeah. I mean, you're probably not going to need it, but it's always good to be prepared. So. Are you going to need a ride out? You want me to I stay mean, here? you don't have to. Uh, I'm sure I can find my way out. If anything, I'll just post up and wait for you guys to arrive. Okay. Um, I might drive a bit away, but because my setup is mobile, I can kind of be anywhere. So I'll be nearby. Just okay. uh, call me if you need something. I'll sure. be working on our yeah. nearly departed friend. Fair point. Okay. Thanks for the uh, ride. Good luck. Thanks. You too. And I drop proxy off. So, did you drop her off in the back street or the front street? Or, uh, I, I, sorry, you dropped her off a block before. Yeah. Yeah. So she makes the choice. Yeah. All right. Then I will bring you over to the map on roll 20. Ooh. But you should see. And Magnus will drive about four blocks away and find a quiet, mostly uninhabited spot to, to just hopefully park for a bit. All right. Okay. So there's one alley uh, that would be at the bottom of our map and the other one would be outside of the boundaries of the map, but you kind of get the idea. This is a, a rather square-ish building the roof is high, about 15 feet high. Um, actually, what am I saying? 25 feet high. Uh, okay. And you can see, um, you know, ventilation machinery uh, at the top, as well as a few antennas. Probably use this uh, signal relays and not necessarily used by the clinic itself. Um, this would be an access point that you can see except that you would have to be able to either climb up to the roof or maybe if you stick to the wall outside, but you'd be pretty much like, there's no cover around right. this part. Yeah. Um, are there any obvious maelstrom 
members out outside of the the building if i kind of peek around the corner and take a you, quick glance you can hear some other voices coming from the front of the building they're laughing and uh shooting at something metallic okay so i'm bored got it um and you notice this little thing in the alleyway um a large flying drone it looks like a a dragonfly made out of metal and wires and a bunch of cameras in the front is flying around it's basically just circling the whole place in a very predictable pattern um it doesn't see you at the moment because it is basically you you came up to the building after it had gone that way mm -hmm. so you see it from the back but you know judging by how far how fast it is going it probably circles the whole building like every two minutes or so it's like a perimeter drone essentially yeah sticks to the building okay um she'll she'll position herself in a place where she'll be out of line of sight uh, of it when it comes back around um she as she's doing this she's just literally taking essentially like photographic type memory moments where she catalogs what she's seeing so that she can come up with some kind of a plan not in a necessarily hostile area um mm -hmm. so um you yeah. would notice as well uh let me just draw on it i said draw on it <laughs> on the same side that you saw the drone earlier you notice that there is um, like halfway between the front and the back of the building there is a um, a sliding door probably used for deliveries back in the day it's okay. the uh, i've painted it white yeah i see that yeah um for uh, for you it is closed right now and there is a um a, an impressive padlock at the bottom that holds it shut against the uh the pavement a manual padlock or an electronic one this one is a manual padlock okay all right um i guess based on what she sees uh can i do some kind of a tactics roll to see you know if there are specific points of egress or or even advantage in the immediate area, um, yes, I'll say. Uh, do you do you um, try this check without looking elsewhere, or do you take some more time to inspect the place out? Oh, she would definitely spend as much time as she like she can to observe. She has nothing else to really do. This is a mission, so she. She gets hyper focused, um, and so yeah, she'll she'll focus on observation of the area, places across the street, um, different alleyways. Like I said, even buildings with like fire escapes. That even if they're the roofs are farther away, just having those types of essentially observations. Yeah. Um, then make your make your tactics roll, and I'll give you any information depending on what you roll that could help. Okay. Great. All right, 15. Um, there is a building right next door. It would be on the other side of the alley, so right outside of the bounds of the, the boundaries of the map. Mm -hmm. But that means it's also about 12 feet away from the other building. It is within, if you're a moderately fit person, jumpable distance. The other building has a fire escape uh, because it's on uh, two stories instead of just one. So there is a fire escape uh, staircase that leads all the way up to the roof, whereas this one, the old Doc Savage Clinic, had an access ladder that's been broken. Mm -hmm. um, so unless you had like a grappling hook or something, climbing the walls of the, the clinic itself might prove a tad complicated. Yeah. There is one container on uh, on the other side of the building 
that could be pushed, pull. Um, you notice that it's on wheels, so it might be a little easier. With the taco truck, would be very easy to move it, though it might be a little um, noisy. Mm -hmm. As far as the front of the building, I will ask you a stealth check. Yes. To peek out. Here we go. Still, 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 still. Where is that? <laughs> uh, left column, one of the first ones. I don't remember which one exactly. Um, let me I try. see it. Oh, dear. <laughs> 11. 11. I don't think I get that one. <laughs> well, we'll see. They have... Uh, where's their perception? Oof. Yeah, well... Let me know if you want to put some luck points into that. Do I? No, no, I don't. So you barely have time to check the front of the place. Um, before they react, you notice there is uh, a window, which is that glowy thing. Um, sort of here, it's right under a neon sign. There's the entrance door, the entry door right next to it. Uh -huh. But otherwise, there doesn't seem to be other access points in the front. Okay. Um, so you have your, uh, the like delivery entrance that you saw earlier in the alleyway, Yes. the front door, and those were the only two points of entries. You okay. think you might have, there might be a third one, but it's on the roof. Like if you go through the ventilation shafts. However, before you have time to do anything, one of the maelstrom turns. It just so happened that he was looking in your direction and sees like half your face peeking out from beside the building and goes, Hey! <laughs> she fuck you play that! She doesn't respond and just kind of like, if I don't move, maybe they won't see me. No he response. taps the shoulder of uh, the one next to him. Looks like we have a rat. Oh, nice. I was getting tired of firing at the doctor. Any points to the motions to the ground you see like this pile of just scrap metal the second one uh the one who spotted you takes a few steps closer he's having a lot of fun trying to intimidate you mostly but you notice that he has a shotgun sling to his uh, back and um uh, he's slowly bringing it forward. Did you come here for some surgery? Nope. Because we have some nice parts we could implant into you. Like a metric ton of lead. Oh, that's funny. That's clever. You got jokes. That's really good. That's really good. Actually, I was looking for this little robot I made and it malfunctioned and uh well i don't think it's here because i don't see it but i did notice you guys there and i didn't want to disturb whatever was happening so i'll just if you want me to leave i could just go if you happen to see it's it's kind of shaped like a cat and because we don't have cats so yeah i miss having a pet basically Cats are super cool. I don't know if you know, you know that. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> either you can choose either conversation or persuasion. Because you can just keep, you know, keep talking in the hope that he's just going to go away or sort of, you know, Try to, to enforce your point that you should not be, like, you're not a threat and they shouldn't pay attention to you. Yeah. Um, probably, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to persuade them to believe what I'm saying, I guess. Okay. 
So I mean, take whichever you yeah. think. Would, I mean, uh, I'll, yeah, it's fine. Uh, I'll just one, two, there it is. 14. Well, if we had seen your cat, we would have probably gutted it and then roasted it. And okay. then microwave the remains. This isn't the place for little girls and their little cats. I did say it was a robot cat, but I get your point and I will definitely leave you guys alone. Uh, please, if you do see said cat, do not roast. Maybe just like scared away. <laughs> no. Okay, fair enough. Bye. And um, as you just retreat in the alleyway, you would notice that the uh, the dragonfly, basically having gone around the um, the building, is staring at you. It's flying. It moves a little to the side to like let you pass, but it keeps following you from a distance. It broke up from its program pattern. Which leads you to believe, as a netrunner, that someone's controlling yes. it. Yes. Yes. Cool. So she'll she'll walk a ways, and at whatever distance it stops following her, she'll note that. Okay. Um, it follows you for a block, which means that it would also see uh, the taco truck. I wouldn't walk to the taco truck. It's just oh, a okay. block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I did he... say I wanted to park like three Four blocks. Block. Yeah. Oh, three. yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so it wouldn't have seen it. But it yep. goes it goes about a block a block out. Okay. So, can I Before safely assume out. that that's about the maximum range for the the connectivity? Yeah, that's probably okay. that. All right. Cool. Yep, she'll she'll kind of wander around for a bit. I think she's processing kind of what she's seen and then um just text Magnus, I think. She won't even call. She'll just text and be like, "So, that didn't go great." How's your business? Question mark. Smiley face. Immediately text back. <laughs> Define not great. Do I need to pick you up? No, I'm fine. I told them I lost my cat. So that went well, but they saw me and they're not too pleasant as per usual maelstrom fashion. Uh, and then I text back pleasant enough to let you live. Fair point. And I actually don't know how my progress on uh, Ken Parker has <laughs> <Yeah>. gone. <laughs> well, let's let's rewind the clock a little and uh, check what the good duck was up to during that time. So after driving three or so blocks away and finding a quiet quiet spot to uh, to park in, not going invisible or anything. Um, I will try to see if I, I don't know if I have any way of like looking up um, how to save someone from a heart attack because actually Zach also doesn't know. <laughs> um, but I wonder if I might have like medical books or things that I've gathered over time that I could pour through right now. Otherwise, I'd have to go somewhere. Um, Unless I already know how to do this, which I don't know if I do. If well, if you have uh, some paramedics, you would. Uh, um, the skill. See. Well, I have uh, a total of ten in that skill. Yep, you would. Uh, you would know that probably just a. Um, uh, what do you call it? It's not the Heimlich maneuver. It's the like CPR, cardiac massage thing, like the, yeah. with, where you count mm -hmm. the thing. The thing. Uh, that could help get his heart back up, or if you had a defibrillator. Mm. Um, <laughs> I have an inflatable bed. Uh, but not a defibrillator. defibrillator. Yeah. Then you would have to go uh, to go in manually, which would be, in game terms, a paramedics check. Hmm. 
And I can't simply, if I try to save him and then feel like I'm failing, I can't just reactivate the cryo pump, can I? Um, you could, provided that he doesn't die in between. Yeah. Okay. Um, Magnus's safe bet then is he's going to try to find out where he can get a defibrillator and hmm. place that he would know is in old, Jap old Japan town is where I believe some sort of a clinic has been built up. Yes. Um, and that would be a good place to go. But given the fact that this guy is on ice for seven days mm -hmm. and proxy is out scouting a very dangerous location, he would have, I feel like he would have waited and perhaps, you know, the risk is a bit too large to pull him out right now and just try to manually save him. Um, so he's just kind of twiddling his thumbs a bit, uh, may maybe tending to his garden or, or okay. things of that sort. Uh, well, Zach, does. yeah. do you have a med tech bag? I do. So the, oh, does that have one in it? Well, the text for med tech bag says medical toolkit that includes everything from dermal staplers to spray skin applicators to sterile scalpels, all you need to save lives using your skills and training. So, yeah, there, there would be. Yeah, I, I thought it was with the uh, the bigger uh, one. Yeah, uh, uh, but no, go go ahead. If uh, yeah, if it's got everything. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, yeah, it would have like a pocket defibrillator or something. So the med scanner gives you a plus two to yeah. first aid and paramedic because it allows you to actually figure out what the hell's wrong with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, after I, you know, I've kind of been twiddling my thumbs for a bit, and then I go into my med tech bag to get something for my headache uh, because I've been drinking too much smash, and then I'm like, oh, I do have this. <laughs> That's cool. Have you been drinking smash tonight? Um, well, probably this morning. And then we drove, was this all the same day that we, uh, I know that we met and everything, but was this also the same day that this guy even came into my taco truck yep. or was that last night? Okay. So oh, yeah, I was uh... definitely was drinking smash this morning. Probably didn't have any around dinner time because we had, you know, stuff to eat there okay so i then, wouldn't say recently but this morning yeah that's okay uh the effects last for four hours so on like if you had drank yeah. some within the last four hours like at dinner for example then uh mm -hmm. we'd we'd be talking about something different uh but yeah you are in uh total control of your uh your faculties cool so uh i pull out my little pocket defibr defibrillator, that's a word. Mm -hmm. And I want to assess how successful I think I'll be using this to save him. Do I feel like I'll, like this is gonna be it? You're an accomplished doctor. You've saved lives before. Um, I would say, uh, You would know in in um, game terms that you have maybe a 50% chance of bringing him back. More if you use luck. But yeah, it's a it's risky at the moment. Do I know of any specialized equipment that would raise that chance other than what I have. Um, if you go to a full fledged hospital, mm. yeah. um, okay. definitely. Otherwise, let me check. Mm. There might be a, um, cause you, you, you have a scanner. Yeah. But or you also have pharmaceuticals. I do. And, uh, the nice thing about pharmaceuticals is that some of them do actually help you help others um let's see med deck um with your pharmaceutical you yeah 
Yes, if you have stim. Do you have any stim with you? Uh, if it's an item that I have to have gotten, then I don't. Yeah, it's like the speed heal and stuff like that. Would it be something that I put into my air hypo? Yep, that would be something that would okay. go into your air hypo. Let me, let me look then, because I think I did designate which thing I put into my air hypo. Uh, okay. What page is STEM and, and the different pharmaceutical drugs on? Uh, 151. Okay. All right, let's take a look. I probably would have had something that deals with someone who was just shot. Because uh, that's what I'm dealing with on a daily Most basis the with these gang members. So then, speed and stim would be the two ones that you would have normally. Okay. Because stim ignore... is something you're going to give to someone who's going into shock. Okay. To try to uh, basically calm the body so mm -hmm. they don't die of shock, and okay. let you uh, let you operate on them. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas it speed would... you. Yeah, but he's um, he is uh, technically he's mortally wounded right now. Okay. So speed heal wouldn't work, but stim would lower your DV by two. So instead of a fifteen, you would need a thirteen, which might make it a little easier. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. And there's a good chance that he could uh, that he he could die in my attempt to save him, and I wouldn't even get to use the cryo pump again. Um, Otherwise, you know you have a week. Yeah, I there's no reason to to pull the trigger right now, um, especially if that med scanner, that kind of like upgraded med tech bag, that would give me a plus two to this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's basically like a piece of high tech operation uh, med tech equipment that would probably be found in an actual hospital. Yep. Or if you want to get it from less illegal means, mm -hmm. it falls under the purview of fixers to try yep. to find that. That's exactly what I was thinking. So uh, if proxy still, ha if we're still in the time frame that proxy hasn't texted me yet. I mean, you'd have probably you'd probably have time to call Catch, and then Proxy would text you, or maybe right. she'll text you in during that conversation. That's what I do. I uh, ring up Catch. Uh, hello. Hello. Did you uh, get home safely and all that? No, I'm still in the car. Anyway, who's that? Um, who's that calling? <laughs> I can have my own phone calls. Uh, I, that, that's fair. That's fair. What are you two up to? Driving, you know. Still. Yeah, that's why. I'm, not that big. What else would we be doing in the car? I don't know. You tell me. Look, Dri um, driving. I did. I told you. I said we're driving. I need a med scanner. Sometimes what they call it. Uh huh. I just kind of call it the thing that I currently need, which is higher tech medical equipment. Uh -huh. Can it help me basically bring Ken out of what he's in right now? I could try to have him recover from a heart attack with my equipment, but there's a good chance that he's not going to make it. So if you know someone that can get me one of those. Well, of course I know someone. What, um, how, what, what's your, what's your, what's your funds looking like? Um, well, not a lot. This is going to run you, this is going to run you like 1100 eddies. Mm. I mean, I could maybe skate it for an even thousand. Maybe. Could you call in maybe a loan? Or I could, I could. Call in alone. Could you I'll call in alone? For you. <sighs> Man, uh, this is, you know, uh, for you, 
And there's like too long of a pause, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, for you, yeah. for you, for you, TD, anything, buddy, anything. A loan of a <clears throat> thousand eddies? Yeah, sure, that's fine. That's 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 doable. You're good for it. You're a good. You're a good man. I see. Uh, <clears throat> kind of tangled you a bit. What? What's that? Sorry, I was coming that, broken in through the 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 you know, agent wasn't was. We're going under a tunnel. When do you think you can get it? Uh, we have seven days. Less than seven, actually. <sighs> seven days? Oh, I mean, I'm sure I can get it within seven days. Okay. Yeah. So, for sure. All right. Uh, we could... Uh, you could get a handle on it when we plan to do this uh, gig. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if I can, if I can have it... Anyway. If I can have it the day of, I'll have it the day of. If not, All right. within seven days, you know. Okay. Any uh, anything else you want to put on this tab that I now have? I can do tabs now. No, nope, I think that'll be it. Um, Great. Our net friend is currently previewing our location. I'm sorry. Z location for the gig. Uh, like from home? No, from at the place. I'm sorry, you said Proxy's physically at the place where what? Yeah. Is that a problem? Yeah, she's like 5'4 and 100 pounds. That's a... Those guys are made she of metal. She, like, she literally. She what she's doing. She... she look, I... She's a net she's, runner, man. Either her confidence is well placed or it's unfounded either way it convinced me so i dropped her off of course it, have you heard the term keyboard warrior of course she's confident you let her go to the place alone well, she hasn't I, she I hasn't what I'll... come back <laughs> she could yes. be dead no uh, but i'll i'll check in on her i'll check i'll Okay. Oh god, if she dies, you owe me a net runner. That's ridiculous. I'll find it. Just a thing. as that happens, the text comes through. <laughs> oh, here, here she is. Here she is. Oh, okay. Great. And See, then Magnus has said he's like, please don't be a ransom letter. Please don't be a ransom letter. Um, <laughs> All right, good. I'm glad. That would have been a hell of a tab. On, just oh, stay oh, on the sorry. line. Yeah, yeah, I'm texting yeah. her right now. She oh, okay. wasn't very specific about what's going on. And then we go through yeah. and um and Magnus is like, I told you, she's safe, she's fine. She she talked to them and she walked away free. How about confidence, huh? Huh. Yeah. I'm I'm sweating bullets. I wasn't even the one over there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah, if you could just right. get that well, that um med scanner. Yeah, 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 then yeah, yeah. We can try to save basically the whole reason why most of you are in on this gig. Yeah. Uh, most of most of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll get that. I'll get that, and I'll have it, preferably by the time we do this mission, um, so that way I can watch you use it from inside the safety of the taco truck. Of course. Yeah, I want to see my investment. Um, okay, and there's nothing else. Nope. Unless you need any prescriptions. No, I'm fine. I'm well prescribed. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'll get you the scanner, and I will see you. Later, TD. All right. You do Bye, like to Julie. idle on the phone cool. for Qu so long. You could just, that conversation probably could have been 30 seconds and it I'm, took you like five minutes. Listen, I'm, I'm trying to have a conversation with a friend of mine. I'm not trying to be efficient. You know, this isn't, I'm not being billed for phone call time. This isn't like working in Corpo Towers or, or whatever. Wherever you work, whatever it's is called. Is that what you think it's, we call it Corpo Towers? Because there's multiple buildings throughout Night City that Yeah, they're all different... called that, right? No. No. Oh. Uh, that's well, not. Regardless, no one's billing me for my minutes here. It's, you know, it's a commission-based thing. I'm not on the clock. No clocks down here in the streets. And just as he says that, you pass by numerous bus stops that Clocks. display the time. <laughs> 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 
Oh, God. Uh, um, <laughs> Big Ben in the distance. Yeah. Um, uh, I will. Oh. Magnus will text Roxy <laughs> and say, "Need a lift." Uh, she says, "Sure." And I say, "Make sure you're not being followed. Meet me at this street." She says, duh, what do you think I am, an amateur? <laughs> I don't reply, I just... <laughs> <laughs> she's such a teen. All right, yeah, she, she goes to the location after making sure she's not being followed. I don't know if you want me to roll or not, but... Oh, uh, no, you can just look around and... Uh, yes, there are people walking in the streets, but none of them, like the Maelstrom are very uh, uh, easy to spot. Most mm -hmm. of them look like half robot, half humans. Um, none, no one like that. Um, you, there are a few people with cyberware following you, but you know, it's just the regular mundane, um, you know, implants that someone would need for work or yeah. maybe for medical reasons, but none of them look like the type of, of people that just shove robotic pieces in their face for fun. Out of curiosity, based on the information that we got from Parker, um, could I have passed by or at least seen the residential area that he was taken from? Uh, he did not live there. Um, he oh. actually, if you wanted to go up to where he used to live, um, let me just bring you to the Night City map. Um, he lived around number 32. The old combat zone. Oh, okay. So okay. he's he's maybe a like, ten minute car ride. Mm -hmm. So maybe like five miles away from there. Um, it's it's walkable distance, but it would take you like two hours to get there. Okay. Um, especially since you know you're in the combat zone, so clear streets do not exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. He was taken from his place and brought here, which, right. you know, means that they really didn't want, you know, anyone who might have known of him to come and come and look for him. Right. Okay. Yeah, she'll make it uh, to the taco truck. Is it cloaked or no? Um, unless, I think... unless I have any particular reason to want to be cloaked right now, then no. Okay. On the open, just uh, looking like a taco truck. I, okay. uh, yeah, I would have to say your car doesn't look appealing to car thieves around. Yeah. It looks like it belongs in the combat zone. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Good. My taco truck <laughs> blends in. in the combat zone. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, to, uh, we'll just move the camera back to Jules and uh, catch for a moment. Jules, did you? eavesdrop on that conversation i did yes okay <laughs> catch was very vocal about you know he repeated a few times the word scanner and he's talking to td and um you know catch a bit everyone knows catch it's, fine. it's what he's talking about you use them at biotechnica mm-hmm it is very expensive. Mm -hmm. Very hard to find unless you're in a unless you're a medical professional, or you take one from a hospital or a clinic or a lab. Mm. You know, catch. Um, yeah. I I hate to break it to you, but um, I was. I couldn't help but hear what uh, TD was talking about. Um, the the med scanner that he's looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm quite familiar with it. It's um, it's not very easy to come by. No, I don't no. know if your I don't know if your people are going to be able to find it. Well, what uh, do you mean? What do you mean, your people? <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like, you know, fixers, you all deal with, like, some of the more rough and tough folks of, of Night City. Um, 
I'm just like these kinds of things you may need to actually get from a legitimate like trauma team service or uh, an actual medical clinic, uh, y you know, not from just some guy on the street. Who do you think I work for? Well, you 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 have my contact information, which means you have some reliable sources, but um, I. I'm just saying that you should probably look at, I'm willing to help as well, is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to try to reach out and see if I can get any sources, but if I'm just saying I, you'll have to look into actual medical clinics and things like that. Are you trying to say that old cash doesn't know what he's doing? Is that what you're trying to say? Jewel, I know we have a thing here, and like I'm in, I'm in your phone now, and then I'm in your car right this second. But like, you're not the only exec on the Rolodex. Is that so? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I listen. They don't call I... me Lucky Catch for no reason. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. I, well, I trust you have it handled then. I mean, if I don't have it handled, I'll let you know. But okay. Yeah. That, no, that's... I've seen a med scanner before. I know where to. You know, just I, I I don't want this guy that uh, that TD's tending to to just be using some counter off counterfeit off the market. Sure, sure. Now, I mean, now be using the top stuff. Now, I mean, if you're offering to waltz into Corpo Towers and steal one. No, 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 I'm not suggesting that. Let's. OK. Uh, I, I, if you're I'm offering saying... to waltz into Corpo Towers and have your assistant steal one. I'm saying it's possible I could pull some strings, I can ask some friends and see if we can get a, a hookup with maybe trauma team or somebody in one of the other departments of Biotechnica to help. You know, I if if we could avoid trauma team, I'm not going to lie, those guys terrify me. Oh, they're not that bad. They they help us live. So they What level healthcare do you have? <laughs> uh, you know, when I level up in exec, apparently I get better health care. <laughs> so that's a nice thing. But yeah, that's why you're right not now afraid I'm of only them. Level, right now I'm only level four, so not that much. <laughs> that's why you're not afraid of them. I think they cause as many wounds as they heal. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, like you get as many as you came in with. Um, uh, yeah, you know what? Let me, let me see what I can do. You know, you're already you're already footing some bills and doing some other things. I wouldn't want to jeopardize your position at Corpo Towers. Um, hold on a second. And you see him like rummage into his coat and he pulls out um, what is clearly um, like what we would know as like cricket wireless. It's definitely like a, an old like Nokia <laughs> burner phone, right? Uh, the 20, the 2045 version of a Nokia burner. He pulls one out and then reaches to the other side and pulls out a second one. And you just see him furiously typing across the phones. Uh, and then he hits enter and he's like listening on one phone. Um, Simon, what do I have to roll and or bullshit uh, towards you to contact people? So as as an as a as a fixer, my typical contacts and clientele are actually minor politicians, corporate execs, and um, pretty high up city gang um, members. Mm -hmm. um, and I can easily find um, expensive items. Um, like I, I can always find one. I know that the med scanner is a very expensive item, um, so it's one tier higher. So what do I have to do to find this? So what I would. Um ask you yeah is either a local expert check if okay. you go through the legal channels or streetwise if you want to go you know through the streets and if you're not you know if if you're not going to look twice at the place of origin of this scanner or how it was used in the past or why there's blood on it I just want it to function. You know, I don't care if you took it out of somebody, as long as it works the way it's supposed to work. Uh, so I'm going to give you a streetwise here. Nice. Um, let's see what happens with this streetwise. Um, I literally can't fail it, so let's find out what happens. 18. Nice. So with an 18, you find uh, one person who's willing to... Um, 
lend it to mm. you. Mm-hmm. They're not using it right now. Um, they are uh, cleaning their office and uh, could part with it for a while. Uh, they're sort of taking a um, a break in between uh, in between operations. So they're going to focus on something else in surgery. So they mm. don't really need the scanner. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so you could borrow it for a fee. Okay. Okay. Uh, so long as you bring it back, uh, you would have a week. Okay. Uh, they offer it for 200 eddies. Yeah. He's definitely going to uh, do his best to talk that down. Um, and I think you, what you, what you would see in the camera is, is probably Jules just watching him, but going back and forth on two burners as if he's trying to like negotiate some kind of money movement as if catch doesn't have money. He just moves it around places. Um, okay. so he's um, definitely going to try to work out some kind of lower arrangement, less than $200. Um, <laughs> well, the thing is as a fixer of your rank, uh, huh you can find any item for sure that's 500 and less. That's true. So you would just need to find an item that this other person is looking for. Mm. And okay. it just so happened Interesting. that they are looking for certain items. What items um, are they looking for, Simon? They're looking for drugs. Oh, great. That's that's so convenient. I can pay for a tab and get a med scanner all in one. Uh, Turns out TD knows where to get drugs. Uh, Um, And or make them. So uh, they are looking to get um, uh, what's called boosts. Okay. Uh, It's it's a thing that basically makes you more intelligent for a day. Okay. And then dumber for the rest of your life. Perfect. Great. Those are my favorite people. Um, the dumb ones. Uh, so he has one burner open and then he's, okay, no, no, I got, no, I, I got it. We're, we're fine. Click. And he like puts it down in like the cup holder. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, call TD. Taco. Yeah. Call. Okay. There we, hey, hey. I wasn't sure if that worked. Hey, what's up? Hey, so, I was thinking okay. about our deal. Okay. The one we just and made. I had, a, had No, an hold idea. on. Hold on a second. Yeah. I'm on the phone. Go ahead. So, no, no, Jewel, one is second, Jewel please. still in the car with you? Yeah, no, she's right here. She's driving. Jewel, say hi. She's driving. Yeah, she's right. It's her hi. car. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hi, Magnus. I was very confused. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. Um, she says hi. Look, Wait, who's Jewel? Uh, no, hi. no, no. It's, it's, it, hold on one second. I'm on the other phone. Uh, no, no, just wait one second. You wanted boosts? Hold on. I'm going to get you boosts. Uh, so, <laughs> Magnus, you can hear all of this because the agent I'm calling you on is in my head. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just talking to a burner phone and you can hear, no, no, I'm, I'll get you boosts and then I'll take your med scanner. Uh, Magnus, boosts, you know where I can get those? Uh, why? So, remember how I said the thing was expensive? Well, it turns out I know a guy who knows a guy who needs boosts. So if you can get those... By whatever means, no, how I'll get them. I will get them. How, how many do you need? Ten. Ten. Hey. Do you have ten just lying around? I have two. Okay. Can we get eight? I. Uh, hey, it's, this is not the easiest or safest stuff to get. Oh, man. How much do those um, cost usually? I'd have to look. 50 eddies. 50 eddies a piece? Yep. Yeah. You said uh, 200 eddies. And now you want 10 of these? That's 500 eddies. No, I want four or 500 eddies of, of boost. And then you can have my scanner. Like, have it for good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you give me 200 and you have it for a week. TD, do you need the scanner forever or like no, just no, for like a minute? Can you get yeah. me two more boosts? How about I give him two boosts tonight? Yeah. And he gets me the scanner tonight. How about half now, half when we bring the scanner back? Two days.
make a trade check. Okay. <laughs> and as Mag. a um, as a fixer, you also get to add your fixer level to the. the... So twenty one plus my fixer level. So yep. All right. You sound like a you sound like a trustworthy individual. <laughs> yeah, of course I am. Yeah, yeah. No. So okay. So two now, two later. We'll come by. I'll grab those. Swing uh, by. Catch, get the that's scanner. That's not what I. That's not what I said. What did? What did you? What? I said, I have two. Yeah. Right now. Right. I don't want to get more. Right. Well, that's not how this works. I also don't need it for a week. Well, I just it, need it for one operation once. So I can give him two right now. And then he lends me a scanner for a day. All right, hold on a second. Okay, so what if we give you two right now, tonight? And we use the scanner tonight and then give it back to you? Um, hmm. Give me like, Jewel, how can, can uh, this is your car, right? We can just, yes. hold, no, hold on a second. You mind if we, uh, it's inconvenient, I'm sorry, but like, you know, that's what friends are for. Can we go meet me up, meet up with Taco Doc and get this whole scanner thing? I think he's trying to save the ninja's life. I suppose, yes. We can make the detour. Oh man, you're the best. Uh, okay, so yeah, so two now. And then we use it for like, I don't know, an hour, hour 45. Yeah, but you said, you said four. Yeah, but I don't need it for a week. So if I don't need it for a week, if, if a week is worth four, what's one day worth? Two. Give me a moment. Give me, give me a second. Yeah, yeah, no, take your time. Okay, I only oh, got man. two. How's, how's it think, going? You think you can do something I know, I know we talked two? a little while ago, but. You need four? But, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. D- your conversations oh, are right. always so oh. drawn out. Again, I'm not being billed for it. It's like a. Oh, All right, oh, we'll yeah. go for two. Sweet. Uh, where are you? Oh, um, 2077 Pond Smith Avenue. Got it. Okay. I know that one. Solid, solid reference. <laughs> Boop. Okay. So, uh, I got the oh, first wait, half hold, of that. Hold address, on one second. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I got the second half. And yes. <laughs> uh, all right. all right. So, where are you? Where do we need to meet? I mean, anywhere. But uh, we need to go to 2077 Pondsmith, transfer the boosts, get the med scanner, and then do the whole thing. Why don't we all I mean, just meet there then? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, not that, that works. I don't want you, your, you, not that I don't want your company. I mean, you set up the deal here. You don't necessarily need to show up. I'm the one with the boosts. He's the one with the med scanner. Why do you need to be there? I mean, I just thought we were just going to hang out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, it's cool if you want to do the whole thing. Like, if you think no, if no, you think it's sure. going to be, I mean, if you're you the doctor like you're here. I don't want to. I don't want to bother you when, while you're operating. You know, it's a big. It's a big thing. No, no, you know. You know. As, as a fine. matter of fact, I got. You know what? I got to do some other deals. Make sure that we're ready to go for the <clears throat> the whole the whole thing uh, that I'm apparently going to now. It's fine as long as you you got it. Twenty seventy seven Pondsmith. It's cool. We're cool. And then that's the that's the whole thing. Uh, I'll figure out what my commission is, but it won't be as expensive as we thought it was. But, uh, yeah. All right. No, you know what? N- n- what? Nope. You break it up. Let, let's, meet, let's meet there. Oh. Let's, uh, because yeah. I don't feel like, uh, when it comes to dealing with drug stuff, I don't like people to know about the drug. Um, right. So, Jules, so we use Jules' car. You want to hang out, catch? Yes. Cool. We All right, use, cool. Uh, I'll let her know. That sounds perfect, actually. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah. use Jules' car. Yeah, yeah, I'll let her know. Where are you? And then we'll meet you, and then we'll pick you up, and we'll use Jules' car, go over there, do a switcheroo, go back to the taco truck. I don't think... Bing, bang, boom. Well, uh, you know what? I'm not even going to say. Let's just to insert address that's about two blocks away from that. Perfect. I know we'll that place to. very well. Great. No, I, I like got, that. Uh, I got Proxy, too. Oh, great. Wait, so it's the whole, the whole gang's or, here. Yeah, I do. Hey, hey Proxy, we're... Yeah, I'm on the phone. Yeah. Tell her I said hey. Uh, catch says hey. Cool. Nice. He said cool. I can I can hear it. It's cool. All right, I'll I'll see you there. Yeah. We all need a group chat. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> we, 
No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like what was the, the the old '80s party lines where you just all call into the one line. Oh my God. Oh. Uh, so so I, we drive to our rendezvous destination <laughs> before the deal. Mm-hmm. You're two blocks away from uh, this apartment building, eight story tall, very nondescript. There's a convenience store on the first floor. Okay. And uh, kind of park the, the taco truck in the back alley, wait for them to get here. Yeah, so, so Jules, it's going to be a, it's a super quick thing. It's just like going to the convenience store. Do you have someone? It's, it's like when your assistant goes to the convenience store. We're just going to run in, exchange of goods. We are going to be a distance away from this exchange, correct? My vehicle, I can't. It's a company vehicle. I can't be seen at the sight of a under the table dealings here. Yeah. Um I I can be your draw your ride. I Yeah. Right. But just you know. Yeah, we could walk up. Yeah, how would we do that? We we park and then we walk to the situation. And that way your car's not seen. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. I'm glad you thought of it. Good plan. All right. So uh, where's this rendezvous point? Let's let's go. Oh, it's two blocks away from uh, twenty seventy seven Ponds. Uh, okay. Yeah. Jewel like losing her patience just <laughs> turns like a one eighty <laughs> to go like in the middle of Night City, like to head to the spot, <laughs> like turning around because we were already almost to our destination. This is aggressive driving. <laughs> it is aggressive to. driving, and that's where I'm gonna call one of the corruption bars. Oh, fuck off. <gasps> Oh, you do, no. You do a 180. <laughs> oh, no. And you start going, and you hear the <laughs> boop, boop. Oh, no. And the blue and red sirens oh, of an NCPD squad car. <laughs> oh, no. Starts chasing you. Well, chasing you down. They start driving behind you. I don't know how Jewel reacts. That is well, up to you. I'm in a company car. Yep. I'm going to have to pull over. I- I'm just going to catch. Okay. Just be cool. All right. Let I me do the talking. Why would I not be cool? Just zip for now. I'll do the talking. Okay. Okay. <sighs> um, and I, yeah, so I'll just pull over very very calmly and just keep my cool they um they pull over um they bump oh into the rear of your car oh god this is not gonna end well using your car to stop theirs mm. and uh immediately uh two agents come out of the patrol car followed by a tiny Sort of like flying drone, like you know, with like those four little fans, like mm-hmm. whatever, the like modern drones that we have here, uh, that begins filming the area. <laughs> and uh, from behind their like full helmet, you hear their voice Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Uh, I, I look to catch and be like, okay, let's let's just do what they say. Okay. We could probably get out of this. Sure, yeah, you know, this is your show. Uh, um, so Jewel will like uh just casually step out and wave, greet the officers. <laughs> Immediately as you Hello. step out, one of them cocks his shotgun in your direction and uh, says, Where's the body? Bo- bo- body? Um, I'm not sure to what you're referring to. I work for Biotechnica, not far from here, University District. Um, I was just getting back from a business meeting and, um, we're just, we're in the process of heading back. No bodies here. Can you make a conversation check? And what is Ketch doing during that time? Uh, he's just standing there and he's like, I think he like got out of the car and he like leaned on the, like the roof of the car. Uh, and he's just watching cause he was told to be quiet. So he's, uh, you know, flying casually. Oh, fucking oh, yikes. No. 
<laughs> the NCPD cop turns around to catch and says the same thing. Where is the man's body? He like he like looks to <laughs> Jewel for a second. <laughs> like she'll gesture, just like like nod, like. Uh, I'm sorry. Which uh, which body are you referring to? And um, the little drone just shows very quickly a projection of uh, Ken's face. I, oh, you were seen with this man when you killed him at Che Che. I was seen with this man on the ground now, and they start growling behind their helmets. I've never seen this person before in my entire life. I have no idea who that is. That's going to be a very hard check. But you can try persuasion. 19. I have to get their stats. Two seconds. That's okay. Um... It's a plus six for them. <laughs> mm -hmm. he turns to his partner sure it was them the other one turns around and says witnesses say there was a biotechnica car present and some of them fled in it look I get it all corpos look the same I, I understand but it shut I up okay yeah they said they were with what yeah you wouldn't have happened to see a taco truck. In Night City? At about this point, based on how long I've had to wait, uh -huh. Ketch gets a little buzz in his head. <laughs> <laughs> he like he answers it, right? Like internally. No, I've never I've never even like if I saw a taco truck in Night City, I would know. Because when was the last time you had good tacos? I I put it on speaker for me and Proxy as we're waiting in the taco truck like a couple blocks away. So you would hear the shouting of the NCPD officer. Witnesses place you at the scene. The taco truck, you must have seen it. I, I didn't see a taco truck, man. I've only had noodles and kibbles for like weeks. I, I would I would remember a taco truck. I would have bought tacos. Smell my breath. It doesn't smell like tacos. Not smelling your punk ass breath. Well, then I don't know a taco truck. Can't we book him for something? Nah, I don't think so. One of the uh, officer goes back into his vehicle while the other just walks up to, um, to the Biotechnica car, takes the butt of his shotgun and smashes the front uh, light. Says, there, you got a busted light. And he writes you up. What <sighs> fucking waste of my time. Thank you, officer. Have a good night. Yeah, better give me a good review. Of course. And there's like a little web address at the bottom of your ticket that says, like, <laughs> how's <recall>. my, uh, <laughs> my, how was your experience? How was your experience with NCPD? <laughs> Five yeah. stars. Yeah. How's, how's my driving? Call 1 800 get fucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They go back into their car. Uh, they remain there, though. They don't back away or anything. They just look through the bulletproof windows at you. How do you react? Um, Jewel will get back in the vehicle and look to catch. Let's do a little bit of driving, shall we? Yeah, you did great. Uh, hold on one second. Hey, uh, um, uh, Magnus, so uh, turns out you, uh, we all got spotted um, leaving Shay Che, and they think we murdered um, that old guy. Yeah. Good thing he's not dead and he'll be walking around soon, right? Yep. So I problem mean, he's, solved. He's technically Nobody, no crime. Didn't dying. somebody ever say that once ago? I don't think that's a real slogan. 
Um, Should be. Anyway, we get pulled over by the cops, and they're still here, so we gotta take a few laps. Also, they're yeah. looking for a taco truck, so... Yeah. So, we'll deal Luckily, with the, the only... deal, yeah. and meet up with you after we get the equipment, okay? Yeah. Great. Sounds great. Good luck. That would be best. Alright. Well, that's not great. <laughs> he looks over to no, Chu and goes, you did Why great. does he call you TD? What is that? Uh, it's Taco Duck. I didn't sign up for oh, it. Oh. Got it. That makes sense, but also yeah. super weird. Yeah. Are you good with that name, or Magnus is fine? Um. Yeah, I, I prefer Magnus, but cool. I don't really care. You prefer it, but you don't care. Mm. No, there's a lot of things like that in this world. If I could, I'm not gonna go around changing people just because I want something a certain way. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. I have bigger things to worry about. True, we do. Let's go get that med scanner. Uh, uh, out of character, is a med scanner heavy? Like, how do how do we move a, a med? Oh, scanner? it's like a um. It's about. Oh, okay, day. okay, okay. I was like thinking in my brain, like, must be like some kind of big machine. But if, like if a, we can just carry it, we'll just carry it the two blocks. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like a handheld yeah. cat scan. Okay. Yeah, basically. Cool. Julie, you um, did great. So I like I like how you. You had that. All right, Catch, I will give this one to you. You actually did good talking our way out of that. And good work. No, I was saying, I, was, I wasn't I was like fishing for a comment. I was saying you did great. Oh, well, thanks. I feel I kind of got a little flustered on that one. And I'm sorry mean, for telling you to shut up and not say anything because you ended up talking better than I. I'm kind of used to it. <sighs> well, I guess we're going to have to drive around the city for a little bit of time and see if these cops don't follow us or something. So let's take a few laps. All right. I have nowhere to be. They will follow you for about five or so blocks. Okay. By the time you look like you're you look like you're either going somewhere specific or just literally just driving to get them off your tail. Or maybe you just go outside their jurisdiction and would fall into like a different precinct. They stop following. Um, NCPD is nothing more than a street gang, really. It's just that they are funded by the government. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're out of their territory, they're not going to step into anyone else's. You make your way to the well, the rendezvous point with Magnus in proxy in a darkened alley. Do we already have the scanner and everything and we're good to go? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we've already well, made the exchange. If you want, unless you wanted to role play this interaction with a very disheveled I... and eccentric doctor. Magnus is somewhat curious to see who wants this and why. But so, yeah, I, I would like to see. Okay. Uh, do you have your Legend Keeper open? I can. Also, uh, shortly after that phone call, I cloaked the taco truck and um, go from there. Let's see. Okay. There we go. It's the entry called Dr. Carver. All right. So he's this disheveled, older man, bags under his eyes, dirty uh, lab coat, even dirtier clothes underneath. Um, his pockets are filled with various doodads, broken implants, a little bit of wiring, uh, a, uh, a scalpel. Um, <laughs> And uh, what you are certain is a very old box of Tic Tacs. Uh, he's waiting for you, uh, not in the building, but right out the door up front. And he has the very easy to spot. He, he's holding the med scanner, which has a few uh, stickers stuck to it. It almost looks like the uh, computer of a uh, gamer. Mm. And any, uh, any gamer in the right line would not put stickers on high quality computer, but 
to. No, but like you know, you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Yes. Um, like a like a like, like a misplaced lunchbox. Yeah, like a misplaced lunchbox. Um. And when you approach him, he would look to you and say, "You here for the scanner? You here for the boost? Ah, the what? Oh." <clears throat> Yeah, boost. Hey, high five. <laughs> you young fellas in your slang. The fuck are you doing yelling that out loud? Oh, sorry. I'm usually more apt to speak openly about these things. Um Oh sure. No, I'm I'm trying to get my license back. Mm. Well good luck with that as I hold out the boost in front of me. <laughs> nice to see you too and he sh like pretends to shake your hand mm -hmm. takes the uh the two like inhalers and then hoists the med scanner to you yeah, you it. know how to operate that have a good night <laughs> all right you can bring it back to the convenience store um uh, shit what's his name bex is gonna Bex is going to take it for me. What does Bex look like? You know, so we don't mistake in anybody. Uh, Bex Jarvis is this young man, mid 30s. Um, he would point it, like, he would point at the grocery, the convenience store, so you would see him. <laughs> okay. Like, you know, the, the sort of like guy next door type of look. Um, he's also in Legend Keeper. Um, okay with a, a, a plaid shirt and a little dark rimmed glasses, mm -hmm. bed hair. Um, cool. I, Magnus would like to see in his read of Dr. Carver, if he seems to be a frequent boost user or if he's giving me the vibe of someone who actually does not do drugs very often and is probably going to give this to someone else or experiment on it. Um, you can definitely make a uh, an insight check. And as someone who is good in pharmaceutical, I'll say add yourself a plus two to that. Okay. Uh, let me find... That would be insight. human perception. Uh, okay. There it is. So 17. Um, yep. He has signs of past addictions uh but looking at him you get the feeling it's not designer drugs it was probably alcoholism mm. but he looks like someone who went clean indeed you don't think that the drugs are for him per se um but his addiction did do a lot of damage to him mm. like to the point where he probably almost died from it and, and got better. He's he's now he said he's trying to get his license again. He yep. already seems like he's on the the other side of an addiction again. So he's hopefully not starting one again. No. So, interesting. And especially if you know you know the effects of boosts. Yeah. If you're trying to get your medical license back, lowering your intelligence is not the way to go. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if it's uh, if it's what it takes, then we have the med scanner. I mean, I it's go... not like you were gonna use them anyway, right? Uh, I'll tell you in the truck. <laughs> and uh, we walk back to wherever I've hidden the truck. All right, cloak that's and... yeah, that's about and... the same time that the Biotechnica banged up car now. <sighs> would uh would drive by they're gonna deduct that from my paycheck is that expensive you think it's nice like car light. joel probably uh, yeah thanks freaking ncpd at its finest mm. ruining my vehicle serving the public of course kind of for a better fun. tomorrow I, mean, I guess now that i replay it in my head we are all were sitting around eating dinner and then a guy looks like he's about to have a heart attack and our reaction is to whisk him out of the room. I guess that could seem like 
we killed him and trying to hide him, but I mean, somebody would have had to have reported it. Yeah. Or they have their eye on our Mr. Parker for some reason. That's mixed up with. Oh, wait a minute. That's concerning. Very. I'll do some digging on the net. Well, uh, I got what we need. It's getting kind of late, so I think I'm going to try this tomorrow morning, Um, and I'll. That's when I'll bring it back to him. Cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. But hey, catch, we're here. You said you wanted to hang out. Yeah, I mean, you said it was getting late, so I mean, I don't want to keep you. I was just, you know, gonna say, hey, what's up? I know we we were having a good dinner, and then we got rushed out of there because you know Ken died. So you know, dying. Wasn't sure what you guys were doing for the rest of the night or whatever, but you know, if, if it's too late, it's too late. I, you know, we would rather have you refreshed before you operate on old Ken. Well, what's his name? There's a little bit of a hiccup with the yeah, whole maelstrom stuff, right? thing. Oh. Um, I give him the general idea of like the location and everything, uh, but specifically she kind of dives deep into the fact that there's a drone and it is most definitely manned by somebody. Um, range is about a block away and they know her face now. So there's a bit of an issue from that perspective. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. There definitely is a couple of access points. Um, I did not get a chance to go to the roof because drone is a issue. Um, So I'm not sure exactly how we want to approach the situation because, uh, well, again, couldn't get any closer than I did. Um, I would have the blueprints now for for the actual building now, right? Um. Or no? Well, if you spent some time in the taco truck while you were driving, um, doing your your research, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you would. Okay. It yeah. doesn't take that long, and it is a a you know public um, right public uh, uh, file. So the map that we have on uh, Roll Twenty mm-hmm. would be the map that you yeah. know. The um. So you would know by the blueprint that originally the uh, there were one, two, three, four, five, six rooms in this mm-hmm. clinic. There's a general lobby, a uh, bathroom. There's a uh, an empty room in the back, which leads to the um, leads to the like service exit, the delivery exit. There is an office. And then there is a uh, an operating room. So they had only one mm-hmm. uh, back then. But then again, Doc Savage was this sort of you know high end or higher end type of uh, unappointment type of thing. So the computer room that Parker mentioned is that the office. Um, looking at what they have and how like the electrical wiring was done. If someone wanted to have, because they were, he said they were taking out his parts and cataloging them at the same time, it it would have to be somewhere in the operating room. So most of the information they need is in the operating room then? Yeah. Okay. And yep. based on that blueprints, is there physical access to the operating room that isn't directly through the hallway? Um, the air vents. The air vents. Yeah. And would said air vents be person sized? <laughs> um, they were built in a time when uh, drones weren't all that ubiquitous. I know it's weird. It's sort of like retro cyberpunk. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the drones that you would find would be about, you know, dog sized. So even if they didn't want the vents to be, uh, you know, they wanted to have them to be restricted, you still need a good airflow and you would still be able to have a drone go in to clean. So a human could um, uh, crawl through. I would say any person with a five or less in their body stats would be able to crawl through. Got it. Okay. Not me. Okay. 
So um, we are going to need to find a way to clear the building, is what I'm thinking. All right. Hmm. Not totally sure how to do that, but could we like catch could fit? <laughs> yeah, that could actually. <laughs> um. Technically, Jewel could too. Five or less? Yeah, I'm right at five. So I'm at the cusp of uh, fitting. So through. we've learned that if you need a five or less to fit through the vents, that proxy's thick with two C's. That's what we've learned. Hey, hey. <laughs> she has to do a lot of walking, okay? <laughs> yeah, actually, um, if I remember right, a proxy is fit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, she had to, she, you know, her background and everything, so... Okay. Um, yeah, when she's not running, she's running. <laughs> <Get it. laughs> All right. <laughs> um, we need yeah. something that will draw a whole bunch of uh, metalheads out of their building. Yep, preferably so that they, uh, you know, don't kill anybody. It's like, it's a, it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a okay. tough place to be in. I guess we could technically just set the building on fire and then as quick as possible, you know, deal with what's inside. Yeah. That's a possible option, though. Risk mm -hmm. for our bodily, you know, uh, safety is mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. Or I could try to hack the drone. However, whoever's on the other side of it will know that it's hacked, and then there's a whole issue there. But less likely to cause injury to you guys. I forgot an important detail. Oh, oh no. Um, uh -oh. The electrical wiring is connected to the building next door. The two story building or the. The, the... the two story building. Mm. Basically, they're all connected to the same uh, junction box. Oh. So that could be my access point. Um, yes. Like a physical, there's physical connection to it to get yep. through. Okay. Yeah. So then I could take in control of whatever is connected to that network. So as long as you guys watch my back so I can do my thing, then we should be okay. But again, if we want to actually physically retrieve any body parts inside the operating room, I, I'm not seeing a viable option there without getting face-to-face -face contact with Maelstrom. Mm. So. This is isn't my wheelhouse. Can't you like hack them? Uh, not easily. Oh, okay. <laughs> People have like defenses. Mm -hmm. It's not just like, you know, there's a process, okay? Oh. And you, uh, you can only hack them if you can physically connect your cable into their heads. Yeah. Mm. Seems inconvenient. Or Probably. their implants. Yeah. 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 Or if they're connected mm. physically to something else. Yeah. And then basically. you could go. Yeah. Ahead. So like if a net runner was physically connected to something, hacking the net runner by connecting to the same terminal, so to speak, or, or point would be possible. But mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Unless maybe we create some sort of other distraction for... What are you thinking? <gasps> Do you have any contacts at Militech? <sighs> Militech. Uh, I don't oh. know if I do, Simon. <laughs> Probably um, not. <laughs> well, that is a good question. Uh, let's check a little, a little something. Militech itself maybe because biotechnica would have had you know um help well not healthcare contracts but um you know health or uh, phys uh woo, cybernetic implants or maybe uh replacement organs for militech which is also the army mm -hmm. um so yes you would have had some dealings with them in the past now, are you buddy buddy with Militech? Probably not. Hmm. Um, but depending on what you're looking for, I mean, mm -hmm. even Biotechnica has a private military. Hmm. Uh, 
I have some hired help actually. Um, technically actually my teamwork, uh, or the <laughs> team member that I have, I chose, um, a bodyguard. Oh, nice. Okay. So I figured we could probably use some muscle in this group. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, we could try to use some hired help to at least help distract, but I, I was don't know thinking how much that would be. more like a presence that would detract from us being there. But I don't even know if Militech would even venture into that area. They'd have to have something really significant at stake to be able to do that, right? Right. Well, we all know a bit about gangs, I think. Mm. Are there any gangs around here that uh, Maelstrom like to butt heads with? Everyone. Um, yeah, but driving there, you and Proxy did see some of the Sixth Street yeah. gangs. The, you know, army veterans that try to protect the neighborhood. Right. As in army veterans of the most recent war. War, yeah. The the fourth corporate war, which That's happened true. Um, mm. 20 years ago, in fact. Mm. So what? most of them are in their... The original members would be in their like 40s, 40s, 50s. And the second generation members of the gang are mm. were just, you know, recruited from friends, children of veterans and other people with like minds. Would those veterans be from a variety of places? Like perhaps yes. they even fought against each other when the war had happened, but now they're... Yep. So there may be some Arasaka or ex-Arasaka fighters in the sixth. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, with that in mind, how about we go tell Sixth Street Gang, not yes. only are we trying to heal another vet, but we are open you know if proxy you can get access to an electrical box and you can drop electricity in that whole place open the doors wide open for them to come in and take whatever they want as long as we uh well if his and i'm gesturing to the invisible taco truck where uh ken is sort if his goal was to dismantle the whole place that accomplishes that i agree mm -hmm. i agree and that's I actually a good point stuff yeah, well, I mean, you're talking about physical recovery. We don't have a choice but to get in there. So I like I like this thought process. We could potentially convince some of the vets maybe that are kind of leading the others. I'll let you do the talking on that. I'm not really much of a, like, I had the cat thing. That was just lucky, really. I just, that's not my forte. But um, okay, so you convince them to storm Maelstrom. Or I, I'm 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 I'll sorry. be what you're trying to start a gang war? We are it's trying to on. remove a force that is stealing from people and murdering them. They need to be out. You and kidnapping. You don't have to sell it to me. I'm just I'm just stating that you're right, sure. starting a gain war. Whatever you want to call it. It's a liberation, we, okay? It's a we distraction. We are just simply providing an opportunity for a bit of fun for the gangs. The war's already been happening. It's not like that's, they're not That's fighting. a good point. We're just helping them end it so that sure, they win. Sure, sure. But you're starting a gang war? No. We're not starting a gang war. We do, are opening do the doors to allow them to shut their operation down while we get what we need to. Who's who's broken? Nobody this innocent gang gets war. hurt here, okay? Um, well, I've interfaced with gangs before. I'll, I don't mind talking to them. That's what yeah. I was saying. Oh, okay. Magnus is like the best option. He knows what he's talking about. And his calm demeanor will probably help a lot too. Sure. You I mean, get really hyper catch. I'm sorry. You just get like there's this energy around you. You're like you're like a, a rabbit. You should have seen him talking to the cops. It was uh, it was very hyper indeed. Yeah, I believe it. It's not a bad quality. It just yeah, you know you get certain. I talked my way out of it. <laughs> surprisingly, catch did really good um, to talk out of it. <laughs> to talk our way out of it. <laughs> just all right. What is this surprisingly yeah. business? Well, it's, you know, I mean, he's a fixer, so he's got to, you know, do the, the, 
conversations yeah. with people. So like maybe I'm, you and Magnus can go. I'm or, in the room. All I'm going to say is no offense, Jewel, but the vets are not going to talk to a biotech person. And they're just no, not you're going. Right. But you can watch my back while I go to the electrical box and deal with that stuff. You know, use that a stun baton or do you have like a weapon or something? I have a weapon. Yes. <laughs> you know what? I am going to call. I'm going to call one of my uh, representatives okay. for this okay. job. Yeah. I think that they would be better suited. Well, like two but people watching back. my back is better. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <clears throat> cool. Sounds like a great. All plan. right. All right. We have a name for this. Uh, that's your that's your teamwork, right? Yes. Um, his name is Jax, J-A-X, and he is company bodyguard. Does he have metal arms? <laughs> um, he has cyberware, enhanced antibodies, <laughs> subdermal armor. No, he doesn't have arms. I was say, if he has metal arms, I swear to God. <laughs> he doesn't have arms. That would be awesome. Yeah, he doesn't have <laughs> arms at all. Just, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just no arms. He, he protects people with, with a flurry of roundhouse kicks. Um, cool. So we have our plan. Mm. Yes. This is good. Yeah. I will. Right. Um, so we'll take a nap. I need a nap yes. before I go running. And, yes. um, and then we'll do this thing and uh, get it done. How you feeling there, Catch? You look a little uh, Oh, nervous. right now. We're going to nap right now. Like, it's, I need some sleep. Late. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I don't need a lot of sleep, but I need some. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, I, need to, yeah. I need to heal our nearly departed friend, and then we need to arrange this um, meeting with the gang. Yeah. yeah. Catch can set up the meeting, because he's, like, the guy that does the meeting stuff, you know? Yeah, I'm not sure... Uh, once I'm in, we can talk, but uh, I don't know why Sixth Street Gang would want to talk to a defunct taco truck man. So, I mean, it's more of like you know Parker better than us. So, oh no, yeah, I mean, I yeah. as long as the catch needs to get the door open, I right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like you can talk to them because you you were helping him, and then you, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, of course. Right. Cool. Cool. Sounds like a good plan. I'm going to go like pass out over there. Um, so I'll see you guys in the morning. Uh huh. Bye. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, I too am going to head back to my apartment um, and try to get this car repaired and uh, call up Jax. And uh, I guess we'll reconvene tomorrow then. Yeah. Evening ish time after they talk okay. to the vets. Because yeah. I need like darkness. Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. uh yeah, I have my nine to eight. So no, it's um, not really that, it's just like leveraging electricity and you know, dark nighttime. Uh-huh. Like if you if you got night vision goggles or whatever, you know, go ahead and go for that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Cool. It's casual gang. I'm here for it. This is like a new, it's a learning experience, I think, at the end of the day. It's, you know, it's, I haven't brokered a gang war before, but, you know, now I can put that feather in my hat. So. <sighs> if anything, Catch, this is a gang battle. The war, <laughs> like we have said, has already been going on. I don't, I don't think, I don't think it matters, man. I, it does. I, okay. You're a doctor, so, who might argue? You're a fixer. Yeah, but I just like buy and sell things. You're a doctor. So, yeah, it's pretty important. Like, smart guy stuff. Uh, are you so. riding with me? Would you like me to take you to wherever you come from? Oh, yeah. Shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, you know what? If you... I can drive. If you want to do medical stuff. You drive the taco truck. Yeah, I mean, I can drive. I've driven before. Um, no. Okay. Well, but I appreciate the offer. Cool. All right, well. Bye, guys. They're already gone. Yeah, <laughs> I got in my car and driving. <laughs> we are standing out here. You and me, Catch. You know, it's like a, it's like a respect thing. You just say bye to friends, but then I guess, you know, 
I mean, they kind of said bye, but then the whole, you know, sometimes visuals get confusing. I don't think I said and bye. I, I, uh, I think flip they up just the taco truck, so it appears. Left. Oh, shit. Like I said, visuals get confusing. Get in. All right. <laughs> and he just climbs in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I drive catch back home. All right, and I nice believe I believe that's our that's the end for tonight. Oh shit! It is. <laughs> I was like, "Ready to go? Let's do more shit." <laughs> it is so, ten. I have another oh, um, no corruption bar that I wanted to use today. No. Okay. So uh, we will we will get to that um, to foreshadow. Mm. the taco truck leaves the combat zone with I catch and uh? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, cloak. Immediately, like, I cloak oh you yeah, know yeah, 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 yeah. Coming. I, cloak. Look, you know I gotta be coming. diligent yeah. and I already know the cops are looking for me so um, and we would just hear like in a let's say that the screen is completely dark we would just hear a beep 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 and see this red blinking dot. Beep. 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 And as the camera zooms out, that blinking dot can be faintly seen through the skin of Kenzo Parker. Uh oh. Uh, I don't like that. Uh oh. Situation. <laughs> He's got a tracker, guys. That's what that is. Oh no! Or an explode like a don't don't bomb. don't put that I don't on us. What it could be? It could it could be a, a fatality like fail safe oh, thing. No. Yeah, that's true. That's oh, true. What happens when you defib somebody who has that? I don't think we'll that people out. that are in the market of <laughs> making denman switches really take into account that you could resurrect someone, like if they're clinically dead. Yeah. I don't like this scenario. That's great. I love it. This makes things worse. This makes everything worse. I mean, thank the viewers for that. <sighs> yeah, for the corruption. Thank you, viewers. They're fucking monsters. I love okay. it, guy. I don't know why they're complaining. This is great. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> we have we have one more that I am leaving for um, next game. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's one that I'm leaving for, you know, when you put your plan into motion. That's rude. Yeah, so. great. <laughs> Makes sense. That's fucking but rude. Thank you, chat. I will I will definitely um look into a fourth corruption bar. Okay. Wow. Cool. Oh, yeah. Cool. Thanks for that, everyone. Uh, yep. <laughs> all right, cool. So that was episode two, A Walk in the Park, and I think it was. We had a great time, guys. This was super simple. Nothing bad <laughs> happened at all. We're fine. No complications um, at no all. No nope. complications whatsoever. We're great. Just we all like did Proxy great. said. <laughs> you guys did a great job. Yep. Everything was awesome. Um, Man, Tracy, I'm so glad you rolled a six. <laughs> I can't. I know. I was like, I got this. I got this. And I you did were so it. confident, too. You're like, catch, shut up. This is my wheelhouse. <laughs> 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 but like, I mean, I mean, it kind of makes sense though. Like, like what what does. normal business do you have being street level dealing with street cops? Like, how it's often true. is that a thing? Yeah. Oh man, I love that. True. I love that. Um, okay, fantastic. Let's go around, do our introductions, uh, do our after show, and get the hell out of here. Uh, if you guys want to see this after show, it is available on our Patreon link down below. Also, come join us in the Discord and chat about this amazing show. Uh, and we'll start with uh, Miss Magitech. Who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And what are you up to? Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Tracy, also known as Miss Magitech. You can find me all over the internet as. Miss Magitech, um, I stream on my Twitch channel. Right now I am playing through Dragon Age Origins for the first time ever. Um, for some reason, I just have not played Dragon Age and it's like a game that is right up my alley. So if you're into that, you can come join. Um, other than that, I play lots of other TTRPGs everywhere. Um, I play Vampire the Masquerade on Saturdays uh, and I'm doing some other D&D stuff. So yeah, just feel free to follow me and uh, see what I'm up to. I guess, I guess that's it for me. How have you never played Dragon Age Origins? 
I know. I know. It's just the one that I missed. <sighs> okay. Wait, All right. Wait. Did you say origin or inquisition? Origin. origin. The OG. Oh, the oh wow, one. the OG. Yeah, yeah. No, it's got some of the best characters. Yeah. It's it's amazing. I yeah, I had played it years ago. I never like I played like five hours, but now I'm like, I need to actually play it. Um and that's my goal. My, like my 21, 21 like resolution. I'm like, I need to play through <laughs> some games that I just have been needing to play through. Yeah. I'm Starting here for that. I'm yep. here for it. Uh let's jump right over to uh Metamancer. Who are you? Where can we find you on the internet and what are you up to? Hi, Metamancer. This is where you can find me on the internet. And I am not doing anything else except for this stuff online. Yep. Perfect. I don't do I don't do anything. I just sit at my computer after the show on Wednesday wait. waiting for the <laughs> next <laughs> show. <laughs> she just took deprogram. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unplugs and hangs out. <laughs> yeah. Unplugs and hangs out. Um, yeah. All right, let's jump right over to Zach. Who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And what are you up to? Hello, I'm Zach. I also have never played Dragon Age Origins or any Dragon Age game. Uh, or The Witcher. The oh. Also, I've never played The Witcher. Uh, My favorite. <laughs> but that's me on the internet. Period. Done. Great. So you can find me at uh, twitch.tv slash Zach Clay, where I do all sorts of weird stuff like Minecraft role play and WoW role play, and I also play this thing behind me, which is not a game but an instrument, and that's uh, me. Oh, I'm on other shows and things as well, other sci-fi stuff on Friday nights on Arvin Elrond's channel, and also uh, the Our Vocalists, which is a voice actors group where we voice act a game while Arvin Elrond plays it. So we're doing Paper Mario. That's tomorrow night. Um, and that's me. All sorts of stuff. More stuff soon. And I have a taco truck. Perfect. That is one of my favorite, like, background shows. Uh, so if you guys need good background, go put on our vocalists. Like, it's fun to, like, to tune out the game and then just hear, like, eight voices are voice mm -hmm. acting Mario. Uh, it's amazing. Yep. Um, Very fun. What, what were you guys doing before Mario? You did something else recently. Say that one more time. What was the one before Mario? Uh, we've done a lot of Ace Attorney, which that's what it was. So fun, yeah, yes. Uh, and I know, yeah. I know, Dot jumps in with the R vocalists every once in a while, which mm. is super, super awesome. Yep. Um, all right, yep. last but not least, our wonderful, amazing GM here, Simon. Who are you? Work we find you on the internet, and what are you up to? Hi, I am Simon at Wondering DM. You can find me over on Twitch.tv slash Wondering DM. Uh, tomorrow is the premiere of the Sirenscape Art Alsorian sponsored show on Sirenscape channel, Cyberpunk Out on a Limb. Uh, if you want to come watch that, it is a uh, very short campaign that will go on for two months. Uh, we've got prizes. We've got a lot of, a lot of cool stuff, uh, including, I think I can announce it, uh, a lucky winner will get a custom sound set made by Sirenscape for whatever they want to have. Very cool. So, um, yep, very interesting. Uh, otherwise, um, on Friday, I will be playing uh, GMing Cyberpunk Red on my channel. Uh, and then Saturday, uh, it's Scion over on Level Up TTV. And then on Monday, no, wait, on Sunday, I'm on Twitch.tv slash Plexagora Thesmophoria at 8 p.m. Eastern for uh, a romantic fantasy game of Blue Rose. And then on Mondays, it's D&D on my channel. And then here next week for episode three. Hell freaking yeah. Taco Revenge of the Taco <laughs> Dog. I'm here for that. I'm here for yeah. that show. Uh, I might just name that that out of spite. <laughs> just Revenge of the Taco Talk. I mean, I'd keep it maybe for later. <laughs> That's fair. I, there I, might I be more revenge be. later. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I get it. I get it. He might need to actually take some revenge. Um, yeah. All right, that's it. That's it for episode two. We're out of here. We're going to do an after show. Like I said, if you guys want access to the after show, join us over on the Patreon at the $5 tier. But for now, we'll see you all next week. So from all of us to you guys, bye-bye.